You gotta constantly switch up your exercise selection. It's called muscle confusion, bro. In the first six to 12 weeks of any good strength training program, you are going to see a rapid progress, especially if you're a novice, if you're a beginner. But then progress starts to slow down quite a bit. And sometimes we feel like we've hit a plateau only six, 12, 18 weeks in. The answer, the solution to this plateau is not what exercises you're doing, but how you're doing the exercises you're doing. So if you are just beginning your program or just getting into the part of your program where you're wondering, man, why am I not making any progress? How do I keep that progress going? Stay tuned because this is the video for you. Hello, you beautiful sack of haunted meat, and welcome to the Nerd Gym YouTube channel. I am your coach, Melanie Black, and today we're going to be talking about the neurological adaptations that happen in your first six to 12 weeks of training, what that does for you, and how we can continue to progress past those neurological adaptations. Okay, so let's dig in. Number one, what the heck am I talking about? Neurological adaptations. I'm talking about the brain muscle connection, the, the actual nervous system, the neurons firing, telling the body what to do. My brain is telling my hand to move, right? Now at the beginning of your program, you got a bunch of little sleepy old muscle fibers up in your muscle and the muscle fibers work like an on off switch, not a dimmer switch. This means that if I'm going to hold on to something that is light with this hand, that means that my, my muscle fibers, not all of them need to fire, not all at once, right? We just need some of them to fire. For me to get to all of them to fire, then I need to really make sure that neurological connection is established between my hand and my brain. All right, so if anytime I'm doing something new, a new movement pattern, let's say I've never done a bicep curl before and I start off and I'm doing bicep curls, maybe even my curls are a little wobbly, wobbly with my arms like, oh, what's this? What are we doing with ourselves? Doing those over and over again will start to establish those neurological connections, those neurological pathways, so that more and more of the muscle fibers that are in the muscle are activated and coordinated and doing what they're supposed to do. As you add more weight onto those muscle fibers, then more muscle fibers within the muscle itself will contract all at once to create more uh, pressure, strength, force, force, that was the word. May the force be with you. Uh, so yes, absolutely. When you're doing your first six to 12 weeks, this these are the adaptations that happen almost no matter what you do. You can be lifting light, you can be lifting heavy. You will see progress happen almost just on its own by going through the motions. But then something happens to a lot of folks is you get to that, that six to 12 week mark and you notice that you're just not making progress really anymore. It was pretty easy for you to get from the five pound dumbbells to the 10 pound dumbbells, but now things are feeling kind of kind of hard, like you're stuck, like you can't go any further, like you can't get any more reps in and you're wondering, what do I do to fix this now that all of my neurons are established and my neurological connections are established with my muscle fibers just by virtue of doing the same thing over and over again? What do I do now that I've stopped making progress? Do I change what I'm doing? Do I switch up my entire exercise routine? Is muscle confusion a thing? Not really. While adding new and novel movement patterns to your program is an excellent idea. The body only moves in so many fundamental ways. We can push, we can pull, we can squat, we can hinge. So all of these fundamental movement patterns, assuming these are in your program, a part of your program that you're doing things like rows and deadlifts and pushups and all of those good fundamental basic movement patterns are encompassed in your program, you are not going to get stronger in those movements. Your muscles are not going to get stronger in those movements by constantly switching it up and just chasing those neurological adaptations, those early strength gains that are just from the muscle and the brain connectivity. Once we have established those neurological connections, there's a number of ways that we can move progress forward. First off, make sure that you take a look back at how you've been doing your reps and make sure that you are going through your fullest range of motion. This is the first way in which you can take advantage of 
any remaining neurological adaptations that are available to you. If you've been doing quarter squats, half squats, but not full depth squats, you can increase your strength a lot by doing full depth squats. Remember, a, a bodies use it or lose it. You're never going to gain strength in a range of motion that you don't actually get down into. So if you never reach overhead, you will lose your ability to reach overhead. You want to make sure that if you're hitting that plateau, very first thing you're going to look at is, can I go back and relearn, reestablish neurological connections with my form by having better form, better time under tension? That means slowing down the reps, working on that tempo, making sure that I'm breathing correctly, making sure that I'm getting down into my fullest range of motion. This is the first thing that you should do when you're reestablishing those neurological connections. At the beginning of a new program is a great time to do this. If you're on a program and you're just hitting a plateau, go back to the beginning and work on that fullest range of motion and really dig in to the tempo, meaning slow it down, make sure that you have full control at every step along the way. If you're doing your reps and I suddenly say freeze, you wouldn't have to like get all the way up or all the way down. You could freeze in motion at any point during that rep. That lets you know that you have full control over that movement, over that range of motion, and that you're really maxing out all of the neurological adaptations. These are su super important. But after those adaptations are maxed out on a given exercise, then we need to create physiological adaptations, AKA muscle hypertrophy. Oh my goodness. So this is where we get into actually changing the structure of the body, of the muscle tissue itself, of what's actually going on in there. That's kind of exciting stuff. So it, especially for those of you who have toning goals or mass gain goals uh, or body recomposition goals of any kind, you definitely don't wanna give up on, your, on the exercises you're using, on the program you're doing, just as soon as those neurological adaptations, initial strength gains slow down. This is the beginning for you, not the end of that program. This is where we get to decide, okay, what kind of physiological adaptations do I want from my training? Do I want better bone density? Do I want uh, better connective tissue strength? Do I want um, you know, injury prevention? Do I want bigger muscles? Do I want shapelier muscles? This is the time that we can dig into that. Do I want better endurance? Once you have established your neurological connections after that first six to 12 weeks-ish, uh, then, then is the time to really get excited about making those body recomposition changes that you probably got into fitness to look for to begin with, right? Now is the time to select your outcome, to select your goal, what you actually want from your training. Because to be honest, first six to 12 weeks, your rep range doesn't really matter that much. You can be doing 10 reps to failure, not to failure. Uh, you know, as long as you're going through a full range of motion at the beginning of your program and really working on getting agency over that entire movement pattern, whatever the movement patterns in your workout are, hopefully a push, pull, squat, hinge, then, then you will have made all of those neurological adaptations. Then you can start saying, okay, what physiological, what changes do I want? And there are three basic ways that I divide this up for people that I work with. Number one, endurance. An endurance rep range feels almost like cardio. This gives you the ability to just keep going, going, going. And this endurance rep range should be like 15 or more repetitions, really feeling the burn in the muscle, really leaning into that discomfort. You should be breathing heavy. You should be working hard and just burning, burning, burning for as much as you can with excellent form. Don't let the form break down. That's where joint problems and, and injuries happen. We don't wanna do that. But if we're working on our endurance, the ability to keep going, 15 plus reps is where it's at. If we want hypertrophy, AKA Tony, AKA muscle definition, AKA mass gains, it's all the same thing, y'all. Doesn't matter if you're uh, like, which, you know, if you say you want, oh, well, I want toned muscles, but not large muscles. It is the exact same type of training. Whether or not those muscles get massive or big depends in part on your hormonal balance. It depends in part on how much fat you have overlaying the muscle. So it's really determined by, by your genetics, by your hormones, by your fat uh, composition, not by the type of training you do. So 
and remember, if you're if you're like getting too big, you can always back down from the training. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens very slowly. But if you want any of those, anything that falls under that umbrella of shapelier, larger, or more toned or more defined muscles, then the classic range for this is eight to 12 very heavy reps to failure. In other words, you know, you can maybe get eight, you can maybe get nine, maybe uh, maybe 10. Oh, it's getting tough. Uh, 12 like is the absolute max you want to get per set. And you're doing a lot of sets. If you want this kind of physiological adaptation, you want four or five, six sets of eight to 12 reps to failure. And of course, there's lots of techniques for bodybuilding, for, uh, for toning this kind of thing. But in general, you want to lift both heavy and to failure each and every time. This will stimulate sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, this is an adaptation that happens in the muscle around each one of the little fibers, the contractile fibers, the myofibrils. Around each of those fibers, there's a little gelatinous area called the sarcoplasm. And that is your muscles on site energy storage, meaning that if I'm constantly going to failure, constantly running out of energy, I am sending the signal to my body, hey, I need more on site energy, on site storage. So it's going to grow that sarcoplasmic, uh, it's going to grow that sarcoplasm area that's for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy larger muscles, yay. Then we can store more on site energy, which is wonderful. Now, if you wanna get strong, if you want that bone density, if you want that connective tissue density, but we don't necessarily wanna get big, we can do that by increasing the weight, lowering the reps, and yes, I said that right, increasing the weight, lowering the reps, and not going to failure, okay? So this is like one to five reps, like you could probably do eight maybe, but we're gonna do between one and five, reps. We're going to make it difficult. We're going to go as, you know, we're going to keep like one, two, three in the tank is how, is how we would say that. In other words, okay, I'm going to do this really heavy deadlift. I can probably lift it eight times. I'm going to lift it five times, or I'm going to do this really heavy, heavy deadlift. I could probably lift it four times. I'm going to lift it twice, that kind of uh, an intensity. And we do that with excellent form, perfect form, never to failure. And then we rest in between working that muscle. What that does is it allows time for the liver to deliver the ATP to your muscles so that you don't need more on-site storage. In other words, you're not going to get a whole lot of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, but you do need the connective tissue density, the bone density, and, and all of the injury prevention stuff because you are lifting very, very heavy. So you're sending a message to your body like, hey, we're using all the muscle fibers. Uh, we need those contractile fibers, fibers, the muscle fibers, the connective tissue, the uh, ligaments, the, the bone to be really strong and to be able to handle this weight, but we're not running out of energy mid set. Therefore, we don't necessarily need to get more on site energy, which would lead to sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. That's that middle one. Okay. So those are the three basic goals that I present people with when they have hit that plateau, because this is when you want to really lean in to the discomfort of being in that space that will allow your muscles and your body to adapt and grow to what you want for you. The, um, the endurance, it's going to give you lactic acid resilience. It's going to get you used to that burn. It's going to give you better circulation, um, it, some more strength, all those good adaptations for, uh, for things like cycling and running and, you know, endurance type sports. But you also want that injury prevention, that one to five heavy. And maybe you want the muscle toning too. Maybe you want it all. And that's wonderful. Pick one to start off with. Pick one, stick with it for a minimum of six weeks, bare minimum, 18 weeks is better. Six to 18 weeks per goal before switching it up. And yes, you can do a combination goal where you're doing some of different all layered together. Just keep in mind, you're not going to see um, like if you're doing all three goals, you're not going to see triple the progress, right? All three are going to progress a little bit. Whereas if you were doing one goal focused for for six to 18 weeks or whatever, you would see that more amplified, that result more amplified. But you should, you can and you should change up these goals, maybe once every 18 weeks to prevent a plateau. And occasionally, 
occasionally even go back to super lightweight and just working on that full range of motion. If you've been lifting for a couple of years and you've been neglecting that full range of motion or your tempo is all over the place, like you're lifting too fat. This is my main complaint with like CrossFit AMRAPs where they're, where you're just like more, more, more is there gets to a point where you're lifting so fast that you no longer can have good form. It's just not possible. So you want to pull it back to like a nice two, one tempo, two seconds down, one second up, really contracting those muscles and dig in deep, have that strength training mindset. That is to really focus on creating tension in the muscle. Focus on what you're doing. Don't be distracted. Don't get distracted. Save the distraction for when you're doing your long distance endurance cardio stuff for things that you can do repetitively on autopilot, right? Uh, so if you if you are if you're doing the strength training the way it ought to be done to break a plateau, you're really leaning into that discomfort. You are present in the moment. You are like you know life is suffering and I am living right now. That is that is the vibe that you want from your strength training. That's how you're gonna break through that plateau. So yes, neurological strength adaptations, awesome, wonderful. After you've created those neurological adaptations, pick a goal so that you start getting your physiological adaptations and getting your body exactly what you want. I will see you next time. If you've got questions, comments, go ahead and drop them down below in the comments section. And I will see you next time. Bye.